This video is a sequel to a previous video where I took this computer, a Mac Mini 2010 with 2GB two of RAM and a spinning disk hard drive and tried to run macOS Sonoma on it. To the surprise of very few people, it didn't work. But what did work was macOS 11 Big Sur. I'm going to give this a go again and see if this computer will actually run Sequoia with some upgrades. OpenCore Legacy Patcher just hit a milestone at 2.0x, and of course now supports macOS 15 Sequoia. If you're unfamiliar with OpenCore, I have a video that explains it, but the short answer is to say bootloader that makes Tim Apple very sad. I'm sad. That's because you can run the latest macOS on unsupported hardware. This Mac Mini certainly qualifies as it's less powerful than an iPhone 6S. The official OpenCore Legacy Patcher website lists the Mac Mini 2010 as supported. If you're interested to see if a old Mac can run the latest Mac OS, this is where you'd check. In preparation for Sequoia, I bought 16 gigabytes of RAM for under $4 on AliExpress and a crucial MX500 SSD. This isn't the worst Mac that can run macOS Sequoia, that dubious honor probably goes to the MacBook Air 2008, but it's not too far behind and I only paid $50 for this originally, so this is about as cheap as you can go to run the modern Mac OS's. The SSD arrived before the RAM, so I decided to install it first. I forgot how much of a pain it is to get one of these SSDs installed. I'm not going to pretend that I didn't follow the iFixit instructions, so go there for a complete guide. But I'm going to give a quick overview because it is interesting if you haven't cracked one of these things open before. It requires removing the metal shield and Wi-Fi antenna, the fan assembly, taking out the cowling for the heatsink, unplugging the hard drive in the thermal sensor, and then just wrestling out the hard drive. iFixit has a much more professional way of doing this, but you really don't need to. You can just brute force it like I'm doing here. This jank method saves you from having to buy specialized tools. Apple elected to use ultra low profile connectors for SATA and power, so you'll need to tear off the cover of the hard drive and then salvage the custom cable and heat sensor. You also might want to get the screws off the drive for mounting. Then it's back to sticking in the replacement drive, which is kind of a pain because there's these little mount holes that you're trying to hit. That basically covers it, but you'll probably want to reassemble the computer too. Now for a brief montage at 20x speed. I installed Big Sur once again on this computer using OpenCore 1.5 and performance was still absolutely painful despite having the SSD. So if anyone was wondering, the SSD helps a little bit, but because it only has two gigabytes of RAM, it's still not fast. Big Sur is still big slow with big beach balls all the time. I don't have high expectations for Mac OS 15 on this computer. Finally, I received my 16 gigabytes of RAM as it shipped all the way from China. I really expected with an SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM that Big Sur would run a lot better. But here's a time lapse of it taking roughly a minute to launch the activity monitor. And because I respect your time, I'm not going to illustrate it further. It's really slow. By the time I received my RAM, OpenCore 2.0.1 was out. Like before, I used my Mac Pro to create this because, you know, Faster computer, easier to do. The process of OpenCore is still the same, just boot off the EFI OpenCore partition on the USB installer if you haven't already installed OpenCore or updated OpenCore. Then from the OpenCore boot launcher, select the installer. This computer is really slow. I felt pretty confident and knew it would take a while, so I just left and went for a hike and came back later. The first login was painfully slow, and here's a time lapse illustrating how long it took. The Core 2 Duo Mac Minis are somewhere between a TI-83 and an Easy Bake Oven, and I realize the Gen Z or Gen Alpha people probably have no idea what I'm talking about. So here's me kicking in the tires of Mac OS 15, and this is the first time I've used it. I haven't even installed this on a good computer. As a very unconventional benchmark, Activity Monitor only takes one third the time to launch in Sequoia over Big Sur. Both times I was running off a SATA SSD and with 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's a nice speed bump. One of the things I figured out with running this on very old hardware is that the first launch is going to be brutal. This is largely due to tasks running in the background like spotlight indexing, but also run updates and check for iCloud synchronization, security features, and nab a few things like the dictionary. There's not a lot of CPU in this computer to go around for these kind of tasks. Even keeping that in mind, macOS 15 is already faster than Big Sur on this hardware. Changing the background images on this computer is a monumental task. Interestingly, the dynamic wallpaper doesn't work, nor do the screensavers. 
Since this computer was in the vicinity of usable, I went on the internet and was able to load up web pages. Hell, I was even able to play back 1080p YouTube videos. Even with 16 gigabytes of RAM, for whatever reason, Big Sur wouldn't do this. So my ambitions rose, and I decided I wanted to play Doom on this Mac Mini. I went to archive.org and downloaded Doom, don't tell anyone I told you that, and then went to the open source project GZ Doom. GZ Doom is a little bit annoying since you need to put the .wad files in the correct place. I did that and tried to launch the application, and it didn't work. There are other ways I could experience Doom on this computer, but I wanted to push the envelope a little bit. Instead of that route, I decided to pursue the route of All F1, I think I said that right, which is the open source port of all the Marathon games. The real beauty here is, legally, the Marathon Trilogy is up for download from Bungie, 100% for free. So I downloaded the Marathon Trilogy, and then what the funniest thing is it's compressed in a .sit file, aka compressed with stuff at Expander, likely for Mac OS 9 compatibility. This low curveball meant I needed a third-party decompression utility, so I went with my favorite one, the Unarchiver. With the Marathon Trilogy now decompressed, I was able to point Aleph 1 at Marathon Infinity, and it launched. I could even make it to the gameplay, but I quickly realized I didn't know the controls for this game. Once I messed around and configured the controls, I was able to move around, but the gameplay was pretty choppy. Thus far, my experience was already leaps and bounds ahead of running Big Sur. For funsies, I ran Geekbench 6, and this is the score I got. I tried to get dynamic wallpapers to load, but of course, that didn't work. When you're using a GPU that doesn't even support metal, you're going to see some weird visual artifacting in the OS. Here's what I mean, let's load the weather app. It takes a minute for it to load, then of course, when it finally does load, it's totally visually borked. If I were to try to connect to a hypothetical iPhone, the borders of the window get what I'd call visually abstract. Okay, I'm going to try and get this running a little faster. There's not much we can do, but there are a few minor things. First, let's disable spotlight indexing by using the terminal, and I'll cover a alternative way of doing this too. sudo mdutil-a-i space off then punch in your credentials. You can always re-enable this by running the same command, but instead of off, using on. Next, we're going to make sure Siri is disabled. Make sure that all analytics and improvements are disabled. Then make sure that reduced transparency is enabled and reduce motion. With a non-metal supported GPU, this does help. I've already downloaded Onyx, which is a long-standing free utility for Mac OS with a bunch of terminal hacks that are done through the GUI. There isn't that much we can do from here, but this utility can manage Spotlight. Under Parameters, then Dock, I'm going to minimize Windows using the Scale effect instead of the Genie effect. Just for my own personal benefit, I'm also going to disable Gatekeeper. Personally, I'm a Firefox sort of guy, but on old hardware, I generally have better luck with Safari, so this is kind of a test. I did install the plugin Ghostry to block ads because those take up a lot of CPU time. From Google, I'm going to load Wikipedia, and I'm not going to speed up the footage because I just want you guys to feel this in real time. I'm going to look up the greatest movie ever made. One sec while I type. Well, it helps if I type things in correctly. And bear with me while I click it. And it loaded the page relatively quickly. Now for the real test, YouTube.com. The render times aren't exactly amazing, but it's usable. Okay, YouTube loaded, but it's completely blank. I didn't know this was a thing. I guess because they don't have any data on me. I'll search for my OpenCore Legacy Patcher Explained video. Finish typing and hit return. And the page loads relatively quickly. Again, this is a budget computer from 2010. Just be a little bit patient and the video will eventually load. The playback is not exactly smooth, as you can see here. So I tried disabling captions, and that seemed to help a little bit. And of course, I got impatient and decided, might as well go full screen, see what happens there. And of course, after it got over the transition to going to full screen and had a few seconds to buffer, it started playing back relatively smooth. And this is at 720p. If you happen to be using YouTube on very old hardware like this, 
Safari's definitely the superior option. Again, I'm still very impressed by this ult. This is such an improvement over Big Sur. Skipping ahead and upping the quality to 1080p and it's just a little bit choppy, unfortunately. I considered doing more benchmarking with this computer, but I think everyone gets the idea. It's semi-usable in Sequoia, which I honestly didn't expect considering how bad it was with Big Sur, even with the same hardware inside it. So that's a win. And if you really wanted to use a legacy Mac Mini, the Mac Mini 2012 is going to be just so much better. It actually has legacy metal support and it has a core i5, which is still two cores, but just remarkably better than what's in this core two duo. <laughs> Inevitably, someone's going to comment I should install Linux on this computer because it'd run much better. And yes, they are correct. There's plenty of Linux distros targeting low-end hardware. But Mac OS 15, on the other hand, isn't supposed to support any computers older than the iMac Pro 2017. The problem with this computer is I really don't have a strong use case for it. It's compact in size, so maybe I'll just like install a ton of retro versions of Mac OS on it, like 10.6 all the way through Mac OS 11, as I think that's like 10 versions of Mac OS. And that way, when I need to make retro content, I have a retro computer that I can use. It's about the best you can do. I'd like to thank my Patreons for supporting me. These guys are the best.